Are these plans of building 300 gigawatts of offshore wind smart or not? With the war in Ukraine heating up, it is time to reevaluate what we are doing with all these energy policies in Europe. So first, uh, let's take a look. Uh, with the war in Ukraine quickly escalated, now is the time to reconsider the security of our energy policies. So in this video, I'm going to show you what happened in the Baltic, and not just this week, but also earlier. What is Europe's energy policy? What particular vulnerabilities are there? What does offshore wind and subsea telecoms infrastructure look like? And what are countries doing to keep their offshore infrastructure safe? So first, we get to go to uh, Nord Stream, because this is obviously the biggest uh, thing that happened in recent years. So in the previous video, which you can find over here somewhere, I'll basically outline how Gerhard Schröder sold Germany's soul to the Russians. And one of the pinnacles, one of the most important plans that was uh, basically that originated during this administration, Schröder's administration, was the construction of the Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 gas pipelines. So over here on this little map, you can see uh, these were pipelines from, I mean, this is where St. Petersburg is, uh, right next to Finland and right next to Estonia. Uh, this, These are the places where Russia uh, started constructing pipelines, which they laid on the bottom of the Baltic Sea, and it went west and south, and then in Greifswald uh, came ashore, and that's where the Germans basically uh, then distributed their natural gas uh, further inland. These two pipelines were destroyed by the Ukrainians. Some people still believe that the Ukrainians didn't do it, but honestly, uh, if we look at where Russia was making their money from, and, and this money is basically being used to fund the war that you, that Russia is waging in Ukraine, uh, this is basically a valid target because this was enabling Russia to fight the war. Now, this week, damage to Baltic undersea cables appears to be sabotage, Germany's defense minister says. So we're talking about data cables in this case. This is not the first time investigators of the 2023 cases in Finland and Estonia have named a Chinese container ship that they believe dragged its anchor and caused the damage, but they have not said whether the damage was accidental or intentional. And I mean, this is the third cable basically that was cut by dragging an anchor over the bottom of the sea. So, I mean, I will leave it up to you uh, to determine whether they, this was intentional or not. I mean, this could be a deliberate operation, uh, you know, by this ship to or by these captains, basically to see what would happen if they dropped their anchors at certain positions and see whether they could actually uh, disrupt communications between these countries. Uh, this is a very relevant question. So when we go to uh, the European Commission website, what we see is that they have a very ambitious plan for offshore renewable energy, right? Offshore renewable energy. The renewable energy of the seas consists of many different sources that are abundant, natural, and clean, like wind, wave, and tidal. It's the perfect sentence to sell you on offshore uh, electricity, offshore energy. So they say, okay, we want to have 111 gigawatts of offshore energy it's just it's mainly offshore wind by 2030 and they want to have 317 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2050. now let's take a look at the submarine cable map right so these are data cables these are not energy cables i have to make uh, i have to make sure that that is clear so currently what we're talking about in the baltic right uh, it, it, it's it's one of these cables that has been cut. Some of these cables have been damaged. And probably, what, I believe that this here, this Sweden-Latvia cable might have been damaged as well. So the, the problem with, with putting your infrastructure at sea, I hope that this is obvious, but I'm going to tell you regardless, is that, you know, the sea is international waters. These are not territorial waters. There are, there, there are territorial waters over here. I don't exactly know how... Uh, you know, what the margins are, whether it is uh, two kilometers from the shore or 20 kilometers from the shore, I don't know. 
I'm not a marine specialist. I'm not a specialist in, in marine law. But I do know that most of this is international water. So this basically means that you can sail there whenever you want to, right? There's basically nobody going to stop you from sailing into here and then uh, going past Denmark, sailing into the Baltic Sea and then accidentally cutting a data cable. Now, this over here, this is basically the map where they show how much uh, offshore wind is being planned. And I mean, the white, the white spaces, I don't know why it became all this fuzzy all, all, at, all at once. Now, the white spaces, those are, those are the spaces where they are trying to figure out what the best places for offshore wind are. But what you can see is that there's a stupid amount of offshore wind electricity planned uh, in the North Sea, in the Atlantic, over here in the Kattegat, but also over here in the Baltic Sea. I mean, there's a stupid amount of offshore wind that is being planned, 317 gigawatts, which is a huge number. So when we go to this map over here, this map is, 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 is it, it shows us some, some different information. So these orange lines over here, those are interconnectors. Those are uh, power lines that run from the UK to Norway or from Norway to the Netherlands or from Denmark to the UK, uh, from the Netherlands to the UK, you name it. it there, there's loads and loads and loads of cables that go to and from uh, the UK and the mainland. And what you see over here as well is um, basically what you see this over here, these, these green areas, this is where you have all these windmills and then you get this 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 spidery uh thing it looks it looks like a spider's web but it's what it really is it's it, it's the cables that are connecting all these offshore wind uh wind turbines to central uh central points uh probably some sort of a transformer island or a transformer station and then all of that uh power gets aggregated and gets sent to the shore so you can see already how how many of these cables there are you know for all these wind uh wind farms that exist today now unfortunately this only shows you the wind farms in the uk because the dutch wind farms aren't really uh really visible on this map so we have to concentrate on the uk right so i mean if you want to disrupt power delivery from this uh particular uh, offshore wind farm over here all you need to do is run your anchor over the ground in this area over here right and then basically destroy the cable or damage the cable or do whatever you want to it um the trouble here is that 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 we are putting a lot of vulnerable infrastructure at sea now what you see is some countries are actually becoming smarter. So Sweden rejects applications for 13 offshore wind farms citing security concerns. And this was published on November 5th of this year. And they basically say uh, Sweden has rejected the plans to build 13 offshore wind farms in the Baltic Sea citing security concerns. The farms were intended to be located off the Åland Islands in the north along the entire east coast down to Orizont. The government believes that building the projects in question in the Baltic Sea would have unacceptable consequences for Sweden's defense. And this is basically all you need to know. Now, if you look at what Sweden has been doing, Sweden has really switched from having a renewable version to having a nuclear version. They plan to build 10 gigawatts of nuclear power. What are the European countries doing to defend this offshore infrastructure? And I, I don't really believe that they are already uh, ramping up production of frigates and such because they know that their offshore wind infrastructure and their offshore, their subsea cables and their subsea interconnectors are vulnerable. I, I believe that they are uh, scaling, the, scaling them up because they know that they need to reach the 2% NATO norm. But honestly, I think that 3% or even 4% is needed if you are going to put this much critical infrastructure at sea, if you're going to be so dependent on the sea with 317 gigawatts of power production in the North Sea, in the Atlantic and in the Baltic, you're simply becoming too, too, too vulnerable. So what are what are countries doing in, in Europe, Sweden? They joined NATO, so that's, that's the most obvious thing. But they're also developing a new submarine and they're modernizing their Visby class Corvettes. 
The UK is planning to build 25 new vessels, Type 31 and Type 26 frigates. Type 26 frigates are frigates for anti-submarine warfare. And then they have Dreadnought class submarines. France, they are building offshore patrol vessels. Not a lot is happening there. Obviously, they are planning to build a 75,000 ton aircraft carrier but it's still not what you would like to see especially because we have all these different threats it can be anything it can be a container ship it can be a warship it can be submarines it, it can be you know um, divers deployed from any random ship really that plays uh, detonation charges on cables or on pipelines that's what has happened at the Nord Stream pipelines Germany is planning to build F-126 multi-mission frigates. They're also buying eight Poseidon anti-submarine warfare aircraft, and they're buying 31 NH-90 helicopters. They're also developing Type 212 CD submarines together with Norway. Poland is building three frigates, and I believe that they will increase their naval ambitions. Norway, again, the 212 CD submarines, and they're building patrol vessels, particularly uh, for the Arctic region. Denmark is collaborating with the UK on frigates. The Netherlands is planning to replace their four air command frigates with new ones, and they are building four to six anti-submarine warfare frigates. And Belgium, together with the Netherlands, is also planning to build new anti-submarine warfare frigates. So, when we take a look back at these maps that I just showed you, right, all this infrastructure, and I mean over here, you can see these are basically the places where they are planning out new wind wind farms. So this is the, the Campion Wind uh, project. Uh, you can also see that they are mapping out some of the infrastructure that they need to place at sea. Basically, what we're doing is we are really putting all our um, nerves, our critical veins uh, out in the open, uh, ready to be slashed. That's what we're doing with it, with these uh, with these energy policies, and it's going to require a lot of military expenditures in order to make sure that all of this infrastructure is secure. Now, those who have been following this channel know that I would opt for much less dependence of offshore wind and increase our you know increase our nuclear capabilities nuclear as in nu civilian nuclear power plants not nuclear weapons obviously um we need much more nuclear it, it's that simple now people would say yes but you can attack a a nuclear power plant as well and that is true but the difference between having a nuclear power plant which is ashore somewhere you know it's it's on land it's not at a place where just anybody can float their boat and dive into the water and destroy a critical piece of infrastructure with without anyone knowing and, th and that's the whole problem with this offshore wind fantasy of everyone especially the european union but also the uk because they are planning to build a stupid amount of offshore wind uh, capabilities as well so with that you have reached the end of this video i want to thank you for sticking around if you want to add something please leave a comment down below now if you don't want to miss any of my new videos please subscribe and click the notification bell and if you want to support the channel you can do so at patreon thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you bye bye <coughs>